Good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to Spooktober stream number two. Um, this is our Halloween themed stream series, our fun stuff uh, stream series, where I try to get us in the Halloween spirit um, by doing a, a lot of different things. So hopefully you can see me okay. Um, the stream should run a lot better this week, I believe, than it did last week. Um, just because, uh, I'm not using my laptop to watch the stream, I'm using my tablet, which is not hooked up to my internet, it's hooked up to my data, so therefore, should have a little bit more bandwidth open, hopefully. <laughs> so, but welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Uh, don't forget to hit the share button. Uh, if you're on PC, it's located um, right above the chat. Uh, you can share with friends, you can share with groups, pages, what have you. Um, don't forget to join us in the chat here. Um, I'm watching it live, if you can see too. If you're on a tablet or phone, I think even too, like I am, you can see, this is going to get kind of meta, Oh, well, hopefully you can see, there's a share button right, oops, I'm bad at this. There's a share button right here that you can share the link with anybody. You can share, um, you can share it in a bunch of different ways. I'm watching it from the stream. You can uh, share it before you click on the stream. A lot of different ways to do it. Uh, the joys of online ministry, right? <laughs> um, but we're going to give a little bit more time, let people get in here, and then we'll get started. Again, if you don't know tonight's uh, theme uh, by the title and thumbnail, well, I think more so the thumbnail, um, we're going to read some spooky ghost stories. Um, I have a couple of my own that I'm going to talk about. Uh, I've done some research, found some kind of cool and interesting stories and videos about different ghost uh, ghost story hauntings. or tr And I do have them dedicated towards church settings. Um, I mean, we are, I am representing my church, so therefore we should keep it church related. Um, I have one ghost story from Bethany. I have another one from Mount Morris UMC, where I first, where I was before Bethany. Um, and then I'm going to talk about one of my own kind of spooky instances. I wouldn't know if it was necessarily a ghost, but I'll talk about it in the middle. That'll probably be about the halfway point. Um, we'll see. So like I said, hopefully you can see me okay. I do look a little dark, but I can't tell if it's my tablet that's uh, showing me that way or not. Uh, we'll probably get started in about... A minute two minutes give or take uh, I'll start off with one of my own ghost stories too I even tried to set the ambiance a little bit better as you can see there's no bright light on me so I uh, just the only light I have on right now is my computers so and I even got some smoke I don't know how well you can see it but it, I do have smoke right here it's an essential oil diffuser but I'm gonna keep it as just like a witch's cauldron uh, that way it actually looks and it, it sounds a lot more spooky than it is. <laughs> but we'll see. So hopefully everybody's doing well tonight. We're already halfway through October already, 15 days before Halloween. Um, I do want to share um, a highlight that's going to come up soon on the 31st on Halloween night. I'm going to do a four hour stream. Uh, we're going to go from 8 to midnight. We're going to close out Halloween with a bang. Uh, I'm taking a request from somebody that uh, joined us last week. And we're going to play Five Nights at Freddy's. All, we're going to play the first four games of Five Nights at Freddy's. Maybe Sister Location, but the first four for sure. And we're just going to go and see what happens. So get ready for that. That'll be Saturday, October 31st. So it won't be a Friday stream. It'll be a Saturday stream. Um, but there you go. So, there's your highlight for it. So, but okay, I think we're ready. I know, I, I think I'm ready at least. I don't know about y'all, but I think I'm ready to get some spooks on. So, let me set that up real quick. Um, and do one more thing just to help get us ready. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Go here. I'm going to talk about one of my 
ghost stories first, so don't worry. Okay. So I just want to make sure. Okay. Who's ready to get some spooks on? Um, my, I'm going to tell one of my ghost stories first. Um, this one comes from Bethany itself. Um, now, our church isn't that old um, in church standards. Um, I believe that church is just 62 years old. I can never remember if it's 57 or 58 that our church was built in. Um, so our church is like 60 years old. So it's not, like I said, it's not old in church terms, I feel at least, but it is still old. So this was, I think, two years ago now, maybe three. Um, I was, welcome everyone, welcome, welcome. Say hi in the chat. Don't, don't be afraid to type in the chat and talk to everybody, talk to each other. You know, I, that's the way I want to interact with you. Let me know if you have some spooky ghost stories or something you want me to look up, you know. I would love to do that. You know, this is a community thing. Um, but either way, so like I said, it was a couple of years ago, um, and I was counting our loose coin. Um, so if you know the setup of our church, um, which you should, because a lot of you checked out the church tour video, um, we, I was in the counting room, so it's set right behind our sanctuary, and I was counting the loose coin. I usually count it during the week instead of right after church on Sundays, and it was a, it was a Friday. I think it was in October. Actually, I want to say even, I want to say it might be like on, like the 18th is the anniversary of it, but either way, um, I know it was in October, and um, I was counting the loose coin. It was early in the morning. Um, me and the custodian were the only ones on that side of the church. Everybody else was on the office is in, was in the office wing, and I remember uh, sitting there counting it. And I usually count. So um, I don't have a good way to show you, but um, you go in, and then the table. So you go in the entrance, and the ta there's a table right here with four chairs, um, and then a cabinet um, straight back from the doorway. I usually sit in the chair to closest to the wall here and to the where my back is right up against that shelving unit um, because I never like having my back to the door. I always like to see the doors. And so I so I was sitting there and I looked up once and I usually have the door open. I'm not that private about it. So I usually have the door open. Well, I look up suddenly. And I can see the door slowly closing, and it stops. All of a sudden, no wind, no nothing. So I'm thinking, okay, our custodian must be nearby. He's, you know, he's messing with me. So that or the air kicked on. There's a vent right above that door. And this, so this is the only thing I don't know if I can, like, uh, debunk it that way. Um, but... So, like I said, I was counting, and it, it caught my attention, because like I said, all of a sudden, it just kind of slowly started, and it stopped right at the door frame. So it didn't fully shut. It stopped. So I'm assuming, like, the door and the door frame kind of rub up against each other. Um, so I was, I just continued on, and then maybe, um, maybe like 20, 30 minutes later, I see the door start to open again, like, like about halfway. And the funniest thing ever about all of this was, and this was all on camera. We have a security camera that, that's in that room that we can see from the office. Um, the funniest thing was, you can see it on camera. So I, when I was doing loose coin, I would sit at the table, and then I had the box of coin wrappers on the floor next to me. <laughs> I picked it up off the floor, put it on the table, and kind of cleared my path to, like, I'm going to get out of here soon. Um, and then it, like I said, it opened about halfway again. And then about 10 minutes later, it just fully opened completely. And I'm, and I'm spooked beyond belief. Now I get up, I book it to our office. I was like, was, and I tried to do head count. I was like, was anybody down there? Um, and like I said, the only one that was down there was our custodian, but he's in the sanctuary and that there's a decent enough distance because, how our sanctuary is set up, it's all the pews, then the stage, 
than the hallway than that room. So there's a decent space. So it's not like anything he could have done would have jarred that door, that door in any sense. So, and it was so funny. I wish I had the video footage of it. Um, but I don't sadly, and I think it's erased from our security system now. Cause like I said, it's like years old at this point. Um, but that was like, I think that was what I would consider like the first time, like a spooky thing has happened to me at Bethany. Now I have heard instances where, um, I've heard footsteps when I'm the only one in the building. Um, if you don't, if those that remember, you know, my, my office was down in the, my office used to be down in the office wing, um, right, you know, you go in the office wing entry doors through the vest, or through the breezeway there, and I'm just, like, around the corner. So normally, the perk of that office was, if anybody was coming this way, like, out the door, I could see them in the reflection. So I could kind of hear if people are sneaking in. And, uh, like I said, I think it was, like, 6.30 at night. I can't remember if I was waiting for ad board, or I was waiting for some late night meeting. Um, and like I said, I was the only one in there. And I just got up and I heard this, like, four steps, like, very close. I mean, I would, if I had to guess, they were just, like, right outside my office door. And I got up, I was on the phone with somebody. I got up and looked, and I was like, there's nobody here. <laughs> you know, and I, and I patrolled the building like any good security guard would and found absolutely nothing. So I don't know what it was. I couldn't tell you what it was, but, uh, that would, that would be like what I would consider like the, the spookiest things to happen to me. Um, at Bethany, I do have more stories, but like I said, I don't want to give them all away now. So let's actually get into it. Um, like I said, I did some research, tried to find some interesting ghost stories, uh, some videos, some sightings and all that. Um, the stream might be shorter than 10 o'clock. Um, I usually like to go for two hours, but we might get done probably like 9.30ish. Um, we'll see. We'll see how long-winded I get, but um, I think these will be cool. So uh, we're on the world, uh, wordonfire.com, uh, which is a blog from somebody. And uh, I found this article called, oops, I guess I could show you. Um, I found this article called The Ten Most Haunted Catholic Sites in America. Now, granted, I don't know how, I mean, I don't know how credible this is now. This is five years old almost. And um, I don't know if there's any more Catholic sites. I am not Catholic. I am Methodist. So I couldn't vouch for that on that route too. But there we go. So um, I'm going to, we'll read the article. Let's see what happens. Um, well, it's Halloween season, a time when folks dress up in all manner of costumes while enjoying candy, parties, scary movies, and ghost stories. If you are celebrating Halloween this year, just do it safely, please and thank you. That's all I'm asking. If you go out trick-or-treating, be safe, be smart about it. If you're hanging out with friends, again, just be safe, be smart about it. Um, all that. Remember, you know, as much as we still don't want to admit, we are still in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and we still need to take the proper precautions and play it safe and all that. So there's my PSA for that. We'll move on. Um, the ghost stories in particular arouse the interest and wonder of many a lively imagination at this time of year. All, all over the world, stories of hauntings, spiritual, hello? Hold on. Uh, sorry. Like I said, I have my tablet open to read chat in case anybody does chat. So it kicked out of the stream for a weird reason. Either way, um, all over the world, stories of hauntings, spirits, and monsters included some supposed hauntings of Catholic locations frighten and delight believers everywhere especially during the Halloween season. Some stories are scary and mysterious, others, not so much. In the spirit of Halloween and in no apparent order, here are our 10 favorite rumors of Catholic hauntings in the U.S. 
So the first one is Our Lady Queen of Peace Cemetery in Royal Palm Beach, Florida. Okay. Let's see what it is. The ghosts of those buried there supposedly haunt this Catholic cemetery. One account says strange fogs have been reported, described as looking like individual individual strands of something moving within the fog, appearing and disappearing. The mist seems to form to, in some, into something very dense. I can, I can read, I promise. Um, you can see it moving from all different directions. Noticeable temperature changes, uneasy feelings, and the feelings of... of felt like someone was right behind you. This, then it feels like whatever it was is trying to grab your arm. Or to be more accurate, realistically and, gra and grammatically correct. I was in a cemetery one night and it was foggy at the end. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, that's creepy. Um, it is... It, it, it has kind of been this weird thing for me um, to want to kind of be in a cemetery late at night. I'm too much of a pansy for that, but... Uh, we actually, I actually have a Catholic cemetery that's like a stone's throw away from my house. Um, but uh, all that makes sense to me. I will say, too, I do believe in ghosts. I do believe in the paranormal. Uh, I've grown up watching ghost hunting shows. And like I said, some of the stories based off of all that knowledge, too, I do believe in the paranormal. Um the fog looking like individual strands of something moving within it that's that's kind of cre that's creepy because that to me then re shows me that the, it's uh human souls you know the mist seems to form something very dense usually spirits to my knowledge when they manifest aren't um uh translucent they're very um they're very thick in their appearance so to look very dense makes sense to me um temperature changes yes it always gets colder when um spirits are around feelings of guilt or uneasy feelings feelings of anxiety uh the feeling of being watched um something trying to grab your arm that's creepier to me <sighs> okay St. Mary's Catholic Church in Nashville, Tennessee. There are three ghosts rumored to haunt this church and its grounds. One story holds that a priest died during the construction of the church. Another story claims that during the Civil War, a Catholic priest was serving as a chaplain for the Confederate Army, was shot and died in the church. There's another rumor that the ghost is the spirit of Bishop Richard Pius Miles, the first bishop of the Diocese of Nashville, who died in 1860. He was buried in the church basement. It supposedly still haunts his old stomping grounds. Who buries a person in the basement? I mean, I get it, but no. <laughs> Just, no. <laughs> you don't do that. Ugh, okay. According to one story from 1937, a pounding at his bedroom door woke up a priest in the rectory, but he could find no one there. After he fell asleep, he was woken again, this time by a pounding of the headboard of his bed. There was no one in the room, so the awakening was attributed to supernatural causes by superstitious locals. I can't say that I personally would substitute with those pounding on my headboards. Wake up call for a regular alarm clock, but hey, whatever gets you out of bed in the morning, right? Um, yes... Because that would terrify the crap out of me. I mean, I've heard, like I mentioned, I've heard like the footsteps and the knocking. I've heard things like that before. But to, to hear it like right here as I'm sleeping, that would jump, make me jump higher than my ceiling would allow. Um, but again, who puts a dead body in the basement of a church? I mean, that you are just asking for ghosts at that point. That just, nah. It's just, no. I mean, and especially, so, if he died in 1860, then the church would have, the Civil War was, what, like 1700s? Um, oh, no, yeah, the Civil War, wasn't that 1700s? Was that 1812? Hey, Google, what year was the Civil War? American Civil War lasted from April 12, 1861 to April 9, 1865. Okay, I was way off. Um, 
But still, though, I mean, that's... No. I mean, 1860 to 1937, that's 77 years. You're just asking for ghosts at that time. That's... Uh, whatever. I'm off my soapbox. Number three. Um, Mission San Buenaventura in Ventura, California. Father Juniper Serra founded the mission, this mission church in 1792, and it still operates as a parish church to this day. A ghostly monk supposedly, supposedly haunts the church and the grounds, and apparently only appears to Catholics. This doesn't seem to be a very effective ev evangelization technique, but perhaps the ghost is one of those shy folk who only like talking to like-minded friends and just can't bear interacting with other like, resources. <laughs> If this haunting is true, then that means introversion doesn't end when we die. So I suppose it's awkward conversations that happen too. Let's I. Oh my gosh. I love this guy. <laughs> I love this guy. Um, that is interesting to only have reports that the monk would appear to only Catholics. I wonder I wonder what type of energy like that would even entail to to have it, like I said, only appear to Catholics. That is just the weirdest thing to me. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. It's it's humanly possible, but that just doesn't seem right to me to have it only appear to Catholics. All right, the Sedumsville Rectory in Cincinnati, Ohio. Over the course of its 130-year history, this rectory has seen its share of deaths mostly normal ones, but with a few oddities thrown in. Sounds like most congregations. <laughs> Apparently in recent years, several visitors to the house have seen and heard strange things, including dark shadows, mists, footsteps, voices, doors opening and closing, and oftentimes the figure of a man dressed in dark clergy in a dark clergy robe. It could be ghosts. Or it could just be normal things that happen in houses. Just last night I woke up to find that it was dark in my room. Is my house haunted or was the sun just on the other side of the earth? <laughs> oh, I love this guy. And today at work I heard footsteps and doors opening and closing. And then I saw a strange man in priestly garb wandering in the office. Was it ghost or just Father Steve? Actually, Father Steve is pretty strange with an unnatural. my gosh i love this <laughs> i love this man uh but yeah all of those are just common paranormal things dark shadows fog um a f mist and fog you don't really see a whole lot of in my opinion um as far as like the common ones because the common ones are usually like voices footsteps shadows pictures all that kind of stuff Mist is a weird one to me. Gotta remember my window's open. <laughs> okay, the old Ursuline convent in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, the Ursulines have been in Louisiana since the early 1700s and have inhabited a series of buildings up to the present day while working with schools, charities, and orphanages. Apparently in the 1720s, the French government sent young ladies to their settlements in America as prospective wives for their settlers there. The mademoiselles arrived with their belongings in chests or caskets. 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 Coffins. <laughs> it's a joke! Um, and took up residence with the Ursuline nuns until they could find husbands. According to the legend, they weren't carrying their usual possessions one would find in a luggage in the luggage of a group of young girls at the time. Dresses, books, shoes, money, iPods, hair ribbons, brushes, etc. No, they were carrying vampires. Yep, vampires. In their luggage. Good thing this was in the 1700s because there's no way TSA would let vampires get through security anymore. True. Uh, they're, they're so strict about what you can bring on planes these days. No liquid... <laughs> Containers greater than three houses. No sharp objects, no aerosol cans, and no undead monsters. Touche. 
Anyway, the legend suggests that girls were permanently locked in the third floor attic of the old convent with their blood-sucking carry-ons. To this day, the, su the superstitious locals believe that the vampires sneak out of the convent to feed at night, although how they sneak out of the building that they were locked in is beyond me. Since the young women were trapped in the convent along with monsters, I hope the vampires were at least gentlemen enough to romance and young ladies with sparkly romps through the forest while calling them spider monkey, which now is con which is now considered <laughs> cute and romantic and not at all weird or lame, apparently. Is that true? Is, like, spider monkey, like, the new, well, the 2016 term of endearment? I don't remember that. Uh, interesting. That's weird. That's weird. I don't... Mm. Okay. Uh, Ancilla College and Convent in Donaldson, Indiana. Apparently students at this mis mid Midwestern Catholic Liberal Arts College have seen Catholic nuns and sisters wandering in the tunnels beneath the school grounds only to walk through a wall or disappear into thin air. This seemed really creepy until I realized that these are college students at night in the tunnels beneath their schools. We all know college students like to indulge in some unsavory things, especially out of the way, especially in out of the way places like an underground tunnel. Something tells me that most of these kids weren't exactly in a clear-headed state when they had these visions. So maybe we can all relax and yeah. They were, uh, they were taking communion with some very powerful communion wine. Wink, wonk. The Holy Trinity Church in Brooklyn, New York. Oh, that's a big one. There are a few possible origins of the hauntings that supposedly plague this old parish. One... Oh, gosh. Saying, I did it here for ambiance, and yet I looked over and it scared me anyways. Um, one claims that the current church building, built from 1882 to 1885, stands over an old cemetery where some bodies are still buried. Yes, that is very common. Uh, for paranormal sightings. Supposedly the ghosts of the folks under the church haunt the building and mysterious, mysteriously turn lights on and off. Ugh. Open and close doors and walk back and forth. Oh, that, I hate the idea of like lights on and off. That would, that would drive me nuts. That's There's a reason why like all the lights behind me are off. Because um, you know, my phone was on. That was generating light. I have this like cool like 3D lamp that's on my bookshelf that I turned off to. So like I said, the only light that's in this room right now is two computer screens and the tablet. I mean, I even turn my diffuser has a lamp too. I even turn that off. So no lights should be on. Um, oh man, that that creeps me out. Thankfully, I've never had that happen. Or it could just be living people doing these things, since those activities, believe it or not, are limited to ghosts. Yeah, the living can also open doors and turn on lights. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, another source of the ghost legend is that one of the first pastors of the church, Monsignor Michael May, I've never heard that term, passed away in his bedroom and continued to haunt the church grounds. Apparently, visitors hear mysterious steps at all hours of the night, and dogs have been known to stare, as if in a trance at the stairs and dining room of the rectory. Um, Dogs do have... Uh, Dogs do have, I think, a paranormal sense to them. Or they can sense when something's up. Um, our, our old custodian used to bring his dog to the sanctuary. Um, to, well, to the church. And would clean every so often. And he had told me that he would never walk, or the dog would never walk into the sanctuary. Um, and it is always spooky. It, that has always, like, stuck out in my mind. Like, why? Um... Yeah, it's hard to tell. Um, yeah, so he just makes fun of dogs. Uh, only three left in this article. St. Rita's Church in Chicago, Illinois. On All Souls Day in the early 1960s in St. Rita's Parish had a ghostly visitation. More than a dozen parish parishioners had gathered there to pray when sometime in the early evening the organ began to play by itself. Uh, 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 uh. Um, suddenly six robed monks appeared, three wearing black and three wearing white. The parishioners attempted to, f to flee, but they found the church doors locked. Oh my gosh, the phantom monks moved toward the parishioners while the organ 
play to continue uh, its dirge. Finally, the vision faded as a disembodied, disembodied voice whispered, "Pray for us." So next time you see a ghost, probably just it probably just wants to ask your favor not kill you. So ignore your instincts and don't run. Oh no! No 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 no. <laughs> just all of my no. That's not cool. Um, yeah, because um, Catholics believe in purgatory. Um, I have a friend who uh, is the um, organist and choir director at the Catholic Church uh, near Bethany, and um, he's he's talked about that a lot. And I believe, and don't get me wrong, again, I'm not Catholic. I'm just trying to remember what he had told me. I believe he said in order for people to get out of purgatory, people still living have to pray for them and pray for their souls to be cleansed or pray for their own repentance or something like that. And then they get to leave purgatory to cross over to the afterlife. So it is interesting to hear that, to see that, you know, the pray for us sign because it's just a way of... Um, I don't know. That's weird. This theme here is going to freak me out. I could have swore something just moved. Or something just moved like right there. Y'all watching. You watch that corner for me. <laughs> oh, number nine. St. Turbius's, Turbius, Turbius's Church? Sure. Chicago. Chicago again. You haunted city. During the 50s and 60s, a priest named Father Joe Lech Lechert was a pastor at St. Turibius's, whatever. Uh, when he was reassigned to another parish by the archdiocese, as is customary, he died of, supposedly of a broken heart. Aww. Parishioners since then have seen a ghostly figure of a man wearing a priest beretta, uh, like the one Friar, or Friar Father uh, Lechert wore, often accompanied by whiffs of cigarette smoke. Uh, it's unclear whether this is a real apparition or not, but Smoking Ghost would be a great name for a rock band. So there's that. That is very true. Um, that's sad, though. Um, I do feel for pastors that do have to uh, transfer out of a beloved environment or get transferred out of a beloved environment, you know, a church that they've grown and loved and so all that. So that is sad to hear that, though. Um it would be interesting to know, to me this would solidify it a little more, if uh, Father Lecker was a smoker and people could verify that. Um, because if the figure of the man that was there that, you know, wore stuff like like Lecker um, was also a smoker, then the two, I mean, that would build a good enough case for me. All right, the last one. Resurrection Cemetery in Chicago. Chicago again, man. Chicago people. Welcome everybody. We're reading ghost stories or talking about ghost stories, you know. And uh, don't worry, like I said, we're gonna watch some videos too, so it won't just be me talking. We're gonna watch some stuff as well. Um, we'll make it a true reaction compilation. So, but don't be afraid. Say hi in the chat. Type it in. Type in hello or send an emoji or something. So. But I'm going to continue. So Resurrection Cemetery. Once upon a time, in the early 1930s, a young woman went dancing with her boyfriend. They got into an argument. She left the car and began walking up Archer Road and got hit by a car and died. Since then, passerby, passersby, passersby? I thought it was passerbys. I don't know. Have reported seeing a blonde woman in a 30s party dress hitchhiking. Those who have picked her up said that she was quiet, formal, and her skin is cool to the touch. Once Resurrection Mary, as, now she is, as she is now known, reaches her destination, the Resurrection Cemetery, she runs toward the gates, only to vanish into thin air. There's a lot to... Okay, this guy. There's a lot of lessons to be learned here, so pay attention. There's going to be a quiz at the end of the stream. Um, fellas, when you're on a date... Drive a girl home. Don't let her get out of the car and hitchhike down a lonely hallway. It's not a good move. Or highway. It's not a good move. No matter no matter what your moron friends say. You'll never get the second date that way yet. True. 
When you're driving down a lonesome road with a moon partially cloaked by clouds, white mist, owls, and bats. While mitts, while mist, owls, and bats are all a flutter, and you see a pale, cold girl in outdated clothes who's asking for a ride to the cemetery, it's probably a ghost. I mean, it might not be a mean ghost, but it's likely a spirit of some sort. Or it might just be a strange living girl. Either way, proceed with your own risk. And where you see can't argue with that all good stuff okay let's move on to the next story we have um the church ghost um oh yeah yeah yeah. so when i when i um when i was doing the research for all these i didn't read through all of it i kind of just skimmed and like i said i made sure there was nothing that inappropriate or anything like that Ow, that was my knee sorry um oh gosh that door looks like it's gonna open that door opens. I'm booking it. We're ending the stream early. Um, so, yeah. And this is an old story. I mean, this is 2009. Just now realize that. Okay. Oh, gosh. That scared me. Um, okay. So, here's the story. My name is Rick, and I am almost 40 years old. When I was about 18 or 19, I played guitar in a couple different southern gospel groups. No big name groups. Just friends and family, mostly. One particular group... I was in at the time, had an invitation to sing at a church in Nashville, maybe 800 miles from where we all lived. I was excited to go because I had never traveled that far to sing before and didn't know what to expect. When we arrived, we were greeted with kindness, and we were informed that the, the church would be observing homecoming celebrations. There would be five groups in total scheduled to sing. The time of year was in mid-July, unbelievably hot. The church building was an older house than had been converted into a church. I had seen this down a few other places that I had been before. The church had been nicely furnished and decorated, and I was just looking around to get acquainted with these new surroundings. I noticed that all the windows had been nailed shut. There was no cooling unit, not even a ceiling fan. Only the front entrance door was left open, but it was no help. Interesting. As the first group was singing, I noticed the frigid air stirring around my ankles. I didn't think of it much then. I'm already getting paranoid. I hate this. Um... I didn't think of it much then until the lead singer from the first group of the first group stopped in the middle of his song and shouted, where is that cold air coming from? There was dead silence for maybe a minute or two with everyone just looking around and looking for the short source and shaking their heads with no reasonable explanation. Still, I didn't think of it as much other than just being some odd occurrence. Definitely not go a ghost or something paranormal. Um, I didn't believe in that stuff and thought, okay. If anyone tried to tell me a ghost story or experience, I would listen but later question their credibility, thinking to myself, do they really expect me to believe in such nonsense? I had never seen anything to make me want, wonder if uh, any of it could be real. This is something I do want to say with um, people who talk about their own ghost story experiences and paranormal experiences. Never never discredit them or never put them down or say, like, this ghosts aren't real just shut up just don't do that don't do that to people um i've won and this just could be this you know six years seven years of youth ministry i've put in my belt but if people are telling you this a they trust you enough to talk about it and b it's a big enough issue in their mind that um they needed to talk about it so don't don't put people down because of it, or don't think they're idiots, or anything like that. Just don't do that, please. That's all I'm asking you. Um, our group was next, and the speaker asked us to get ready. We moved to a side room to strap on our instruments and waited to be introduced. While we were standing and waiting, something caught my eye. In another side room we were facing, there it was, a hovering bright white neon-looking light in the shape of a small-sized comet or the size of a Nerf football with the front end rounded and the back end sort of tapered in, uh, to a tail or hazy point. As soon as my eyes fixed on it, the light whisked to the back of the room, up the ceiling, and into the farthest corner. Then the doors slammed shut hard and the door handle jiggled violently for about three or four seconds and then it was over. Couldn't believe what I had just witnessed. I turned to look at the other people in my group, and their mouths and eyes were just as wide open like mine. I knew without saying a word that they had seen what I had seen. We were 
we finally were called out to the main part of the church and we did our set of songs. I was in a daze the entire time we were performing, asking myself what just happened. And to this day, I'm still not sure. Wow. That's intense. <laughs> I mean, that's just intense. I mean, I can understand orbs because, I mean, all that is is just balls of energy. And orbs are an, can be an easier thing to debunk. So... I can understand um, orbs in themselves, but the chain of events, that's weird. That's creepy. I mean, to see the orb, to look at it, acknowledge it, the orb shoot away, run to the farthest corner, and have the door slam and shake violently. Whew. That's just weird. That's too, too, too weird. Um... We went outside for lunch, and we asked the people that invited us if strange things like that happened a lot. They acted like they didn't know what the, we were talking about. I'm sure they've seen something. That presence was too strong not to be noticed. Since that time, I've never seen or experienced anything like that, and I hope I never do. When I try to tell the story, I see people looking at me the same way I used to look at people uh, telling me their story. Used to. I'm just left wondering what is out there, what it's capable of. Um... And this, he's asking for help, which is cool. Um, yeah. And so, uh, believing, I'm a believer in God. Uh, paranormal phenoms were the devil's work. Um, and this is, again, I'm just going to say it in the terms of kind of just responding to it. I'm not putting this person down or I'm not trying to call this person out or anything like that. Um, Paranormal phenomenons aren't necessarily the devil's work. Um, there are demons. There are um, demonic entities. There are there are very negative, harsh, negative spirits out there. Um, but there are positive ones, um, and there are like um, docile. There's a word they use, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. But um, a lot of spirits are lost. Um, I know we kind of talked about purgatory in the last article, um, but a lot of people are lost. They're wandering around trying to find, usually it's to try and find closure. Um, so that didn't, well, see that spirit kind of seemed violent. Otherwise it wouldn't have slammed the door and shook the handle so hard. Um, I don't know. That's hard to tell. So, but I don't want to put this, I'm going by what I've learned and what I know, um, to each their own. Uh, matters of faith don't need to be proven, that's why it's called faith. Uh, pursued as a matter of science, yes. Makes sense to me to have one's faith and still have their, yes. Yes, yes, to have faith in God and for God's protection, and to also experience something paranormal, it's not one trumps the other. To both things can be active and can be active separately. So that's very true. Good way to put it, Ox Mortis. Um, I was, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Oh, that's a good point, too. Liberty Bell has a good point. You said that the church was a converted house. Whatever it was could be more connected to the house than the church that is now occupying the space. That is true. Sometimes I've I've seen, you know, ghost hunting shows and whatever. You, they could be fake. They could be true, whatever. Um, but I have seen ghost hunting shows that um, can claim that they will harass uh building occupants because they've kind of like invaded their space now um the ghosts still feel like that it's their space but obviously it's not so that's an interesting thought i never thought about that um interesting 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 um, speaking of the haunted organ, um, let's watch, let's read this one. The haunted church organ. Okay, hold on. 
First things first. Gotta drink my water. Gotta stay hydrated. I've been talking for the last 50 minutes. Okay, bear with me here. If you've searched the internet for other true ghost stories from North Carolina, you're inevitably, you're inevitably going to run across someone's version of the Kadesh Church Ghost. The earliest version of this story that I've ever found is, was in a book by Nancy Roberts, who incidentally writes pretty good stuff. Uh, maybe everyone else just got it from her. I don't know. But supposedly this little town of Kadesh in the upper Cleveland County has a Methodist church in which the organ will play by itself. Ah, I, just, <laughs> I don't know if I want to read this now. I forgot this was a Methodist church, and usually I'm in the sanctuary by myself a lot between recording our, the weekly content and then prepping the screen for Sunday mornings and testing equipment. And the last thing I need to hear is the organ playing by itself. Cool. Anyways. Uh, makes for an interesting story, except that there is no town of Kadesh, North Carolina, in Upper Cleveland County or anywhere else. For that measure, for that matter, uh, Kadesh Barnea, according to the Old Testament, is where Moses and the Israelites spent much of their 40 years wandering around the desert. So Kadesh is a natural name for a church. Um, but that was hardly enough to be much help in finding a ghost. I was content to let the matter go until somebody wrote asking if I had heard the church organ that played itself in a little Methodist church in Kassar in Upper Cleveland County. Turns out he meant Kassar. Um, though I don't use it usually, I all. Though I usually don't bother to check out a story unless I get some pretty clear directions from somebody or a whole lot of people write me about it, the similarities were striking enough to raise my curiosity. Surely not every Methodist church in Upper Cleveland County had a haunted organ. Plus, Kassar is kind of near Morganton, so I stopped by on my way to Brown Mountain. Very relevant stuff for us. <laughs> um, to make matters even more interesting, I then found a Kadesh Methodist Church along the Kassar Highway near Lawndale, actually in central Cleveland County. Uh, so here's Kassar's story. Here's the Kassar story as related to me. Sometime after World War II, a fellow who worked for a highway construction company lived in Kassar with his wife and nine-year-old daughter and played the organ for the local Methodist Church on Sundays. For one reason or another, perhaps he was going fishing, he brought home a few sticks of dynamite from work and stashed it in his basement. Kind of forgot about it. How do you forget about dynamite? Oh well. In one chilly evening, he went out with his wife to dinner with friends, leaving their daughter at home by herself. You left your nine-year-old daughter at home by herself? After World War II, 1950s? Mm, yeah, different story. Um, well, the furnace malfunctioned, and while this ordinarily wouldn't have been a big deal, the dynamite happened to be stored nearby. The house was blown apart. They were only... Ah, they were only able to find little pieces of his daughter scattered about the neighborhood. Ah, he was devastated, of course, and the music he played at her funeral, while beautiful, chilled the mourners to the bone. He never went back to the church after his daughter's service and died a few months later a broken man. I was told that you can still hear organ music from time to time, and independent of the organ playing itself, the little girl appears in the graveyard, still engulfed by the flames of her house. <laughs> okay, that one actually gave me chills. Oh my gosh, no! No, what did you find then? So, interesting story. And with this, within the same time frame as the Kadesh Church story, which is the church that um, the church organ plays by itself without explanations, before we pulled into Kassar, and the first thing you realize is that the Kassar Methodist Church is the largest building in the community. No traffic lights in town, and at first I didn't even see a graveyard. We drove clear across town thinking it was another church, but didn't take long to realize what we had found was about all there was to Kassar. So we headed back, raising the curiosity of one or two of the residents, who proceeded to shadow us in their pickup truck for the remainder of our visit. I parked at the church, and took a few of these pics, and I looked behind me across the road and saw the graveyard. 
Walking over to it, the cemetery looked awfully small, and I was thinking that the whole Kassar excursion had been a bus. When I got close enough to read the sign of the cemetery, um, entrance, no loitering or hanging out at night. Curiouser and curiouser, cried Alice. It seemed kind of odd to me that within this small community where everybody obviously knew what everybody else was doing in this town at any given moment, the church had gone to great expense to post a sign at the cemetery that was out on a little plot of land in an open field on the side of a hill. I was intrigued, but it was nearly dark, so I booked it down, on down to the Kadesh Methodist Church, though it was too dark with pictures, and assured herself that there was no inexplicable organ music coming from within. Now, it's not every day that one has the chance to see the ghost flambe. Uh, so, of course, we drove straight back to Kassar, less than 30 minutes, and then waited a little ways off the Grigor. We stayed there for about two hours until the sheriff's deputy drove by about the fifth time, and then we left. Never did see anything, but then again, not sure, real sure which church I was supposed to be at either. Interesting. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, do I want to read this last one? Um, I, I was looking back through this one and I wasn't too thrilled with it as much anymore. Um, and actually this is a good time to break off at the halfway point. And, uh, you know, we read three articles. I'll tell my next ghost story and then we will, uh, switch back to, uh, videos. So let me make sure I transition properly. Um, so yes, so this ghost story that I'm going to tell, not really sure if it was a true ghost, but it was definitely paranormal and just not real <laughs> um we were we it was my my mom my sister her friend and me um we were going to i think we was going to get the mail at my grandpa's house um and at the time uh he was in the hospital um I think in the hospital or the assisted living facility. I can't remember. Um, so again, to paint the picture, that's like six years ago. And um, I think I was sorting through the mail. She was doing some cleaning and my sister and her friend stayed in her car. As I was sorting the mail, standing in the kitchen. So to kind of paint the picture of the house. Um, can I pull up like MS Paint? <laughs> So the one, this is one downside I'll say from Zoom to do this recording is Zoom has like a whiteboard I could use. So, all right. So to paint a picture, so this is like the front door, and you go down over here is uh, extra hallway, uh, and then a little bit more, and then uh, kitchen, and then living room, all that. So my mom was like over here. My sister, oh, I guess you should be able to see it too. Um, my sister and her friend were out in the car still in the driveway. So the driveway was out here and I'm standing here. So we're all spread out far enough to where nobody could really hear each other. I mean, nobody could hear each other clearly. All of a sudden in my ear, in my right ear, I hear somebody scream help or help me one of the two and um, I have yet to figure out where it came from and afterwards I, I thought it was mom so I went to her and said you call me no you didn't no I said I just heard somebody yell help so, and then I went out and asked my sister, you know, did you guys hear anything? No. So I'm walking through the entire house. I think I grabbed something to be a weapon because he, his basement stairs are like here-ish. Um, so it's like the kitchen, dining room area. And then there's a door here. There's an entryway here um, that has a door that leads out to the driveway. So... I, I grabbed something and I was just patrolling the house, scared out of my mind, but patrolling the house and found nobody, found nothing. 
to this day, I couldn't tell you what it was. Um, the closest thing in, um, in my on again, off and off again time with therapy, um, one of the therapists I was seeing at the time said it could have been, um, what did she say? It's a residual thing from PTSD, um, which to, to shine more background on the story, because it, it's actually interesting that this story came up today because we're getting close to you know, the anniversary of this. Um, my grandpa had uh, bad health issues, um, and it got to the point in the summer of 2014 that um, I had to, I moved in with him to help take care of him. He needed 24-hour care. Um, so I, and I took care of him for four months, off and on, or I took care of him for those four months, and then Halloween night, which is the creepier thing now I'm thinking about this because it's almost a, it'll be the exact same day. It was a Saturday night. I remember this. Um, yeah, it was a Saturday night, Friday night or Saturday night. Now I can't remember. You know, I remember this, but I can't remember. Um, and he had fallen like three times that day. Uh, he fell once in the morning, once it was like late afternoon and once at like 10 o'clock at night. And after the 10 o'clock, with the 10 o'clock at night one, I had to call my mom to see if she could come and help me get him up and put him back to bed. And we were sitting out in the, uh, in the, in the living room and she's like, you going to be okay? You want me to stay for a little bit? And I said, no, it'll be all right. And I did not sleep that night all that well. And of course this Halloween night had to be one of the windiest nights of the year. And it, uh, his house, I would say, is an older house, um, and where my bed was, I, there was a window, like, diagonally from me, and there's a tree right there, so every so often I hear the tree branch scraping against the window, so it was, like, 2 o'clock when I finally got to bed, um, and I woke up at 6.30 to this loud thud, he had fallen again, hit his head, um, so we had to call 911. Uh, found out it was a brain bleed, and then the story kind of goes from there. But um, I had lived with some guilt that, you know, that, that feeling like I could have done more. Uh, what didn't I do that to prevent this? What didn't I do that could assist stop this from happening? I lived with all that kind of grief for a while. And um, she said that the residents, uh, the residual aspect of that happening the the voice in my ear to scream help me or help or something like that um could have related from the ptsd of everything that i had went through um during that time and it could have been a case too where it was like a supernatural thing because he if he was at the home if he was at the assisted living facility at the time to hear um and that maybe it was like a telecommunication thing. Who knows? And to be honest with you, too, his neighbor was very mentally not okay. So it could have came from the neighbor's house. It just sounded so real to me. I was spooked and tripping out the rest of the day. I mean, I had this, like, pale face, bug-eyed look on me for the rest of that day. So that that was my, that was my again, a non-church ghost story, but that was my, like, probably like my most memorable mm. non-church related ghost story um there was another time where i was sitting at our downstairs computer uh in the setup like it is so mom if you're watching here you go um i was the only one in the house at the time um so where it is um if you've seen my house it's the family room, so we sit right in front of the big window that's above the garage, and to the left of me, so if I'm facing the screen like I'm talking to you guys, to the left of me is the kitchen, and we had a, we had a stack of dishes done. Again, nobody in the house, nothing going on, and um, I just so happened to look over at the right time, and the towel that was sitting on top of these dishes starts slowly coming off and slowly coming off and slowly coming off until it just falls to the ground 
I'm spooked out of my gourd. Okay, you guys are telling me that there's something spooky going on around me, right? You guys are going to leave me in the lurch to get captured by demons? Hope not. Um, and then I couldn't tell you what happened. I could believe it if the dishes were done, like, fairly recently. Um, and then the towel just slowly did its thing. There's no air vents near that area. I couldn't tell you what it was. Um... I was to say, I think it's like 24 hours almost from the time that that happened. So it was weird. It was weird. Don't get me wrong. But we need to move on to the next, um, to the next thing, which I don't want to start yet. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Okay. So we're going to watch a countdown video. So I got to put my headphones on. Of the 10 creepy ghost, church ghost sightings caught on camera. Um, the two out of the three videos I find are from this same guy. Um, I really like him. He seems to know what he's doing. So let's watch. How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slap Ham. Today we're looking at some creepy images. From a photo of a ghost at a christening to the spirit of a priest that showed up to his own funeral. We count 10 creepy church ghost sightings caught on camera. Always put my headphones on backwards. Before we get into it, remember to hit that subscribe button for more awesome, creepy content just like this. Make sure you hit follow on our Facebook page. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. Um, but actually, yeah, stay tuned. About midweek this week, um, I'll have some special news to announce regarding social media stuff. So stay tuned for that. And if you haven't seen it, there's a poll that's out there right now. Um, if I remember, I'll share it tonight after the stream, maybe Monday. Um, but there's a poll out there. We're going to be expanding our social media platforms or expanding our social media presence. So be sure to vote in the poll and uh, see. But we do have some. Cool, I do have some cool news coming out for that. But later, I just had to share. Okay. In 2016, a tourist captured this startling footage while waiting in line to enter St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican City. The video appears to show a mysterious figure wearing a dark hooded robe perched in one of the church's bell towers. The figure doesn't even appear to be distracted by the ringing bell as it stares ominously upon the crowd below. When the video first appeared, it sent lovers of the paranormal into a social media frenzy. Some believe that the figure is a fallen angel, while others thought it may have been the ghost of someone who had committed suicide by leaping from the bell tower. A few even noted the figure's eerie resemblance to the Slender Man. While the true identity of the figure remains unknown, one thing is for certain. It sure makes for a very creepy video. So that's interesting. Um... Because my church knowledge of everything, or my knowledge of paranormal stuff and everything, is it, like my debunking brain is coming into that. I gotta close my window because otherwise I'm gonna hear stuff outside and call it, uh, or think it's something else is going on. Um, so, a couple things for me is the fact that the church bells are going on in the background. You can see it in the video that they're swinging back and forth. And this figure is just not moving. Um, but this figure doesn't move at all, um, which is even creepier to me. I see the idea with Slender Man, but Slender Man, to my knowledge, um, is like way taller and um, with the whiteness that Slender Man, the Slender Man character portrays doesn't come across to me too it does look like this hooded figure like watching over the crowd too and if it's at the basilica which i think is like the biggest like roman catholic church in italy um i could see that being like a former monk or a former father looking over his people but that's that is interesting that's a hard one to debunk photo was taken in an old church in the ghost town of Banak, Montana. According to the story attached to the picture, the woman in the bottom right-hand corner heard shuffling sounds coming from the other side of the room. She looked over but couldn't see anything there. It wasn't until the woman had the photos developed that she saw the ghostly figure sitting in the seats on the other side of the room. 
The town of Banak was founded in 1862. It was originally a mining town that saw its population dwindle over time. It became completely abandoned when the last few residents left sometime in the 1970s. Since then, the town has remained empty. Could it be possible that this woman has photographed the ghost of one of the town's former residents? Interesting. Um, that's creepier to me that, you know, it's it's a ghost town that's been remaining since the 70s. Um, but yeah, you can, to me, that kind of, you can kind of tell that that's a, that's a human-like figure. And again, one of the stories talked about like the denseness of uh, apparitions like that. And this is what I was talking about, like this denseness. You can't see the row of chairs behind that person. Um, and I can kind of see like, here's the head... The round face, you can kind of see like a poofed hairline. Um, and almost like they're facing this area. To me, I mean, this is how it's looking. This is how it's looking to me. Like they're facing this area back here. And then just kind of like the sweeping hair, maybe? I don't know. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. This photo was taken by a Mr. Bootman while visiting a church in the village of Eastry. No! Bootman claims that when he took the photo, the only other person present in the church was the cleaning lady. When the image was first developed, it was thought that it showed the ghost of a vicar who once resided over the church. Could it be possible? The figure certainly appears to be praying. His head is bowed, hands are clasped, and he has a solemn look on his face. What do you think? Could the figure seen in this photo actually be the ghost of a deceased vicar? Or... No, I mean, yes, but no. I mean, that is too, that's at that point where it hits like that uncanny valley. That is too real of an image because my first thought was like, okay, maybe it was like part of the wood, like the stain of an old, the old wood on there. But I mean, you can tell that's an old Catholic priest. I mean, the head, the white collar, praying hands with individual fingers, the nose, you can see the black eyes. I mean, that's just all there. Ah, no. I mean, no, I don't want to believe it, but man, that's so cool. Could it be someone or something else entirely? There's very little information available about this photo, other than it was taken at a wedding and neither the guests nor the bridesmaids noticed anything strange during the ceremony. However, the photo reveals a dark hooded figure hovering in front of the stained glass window. The figure, which appears to be floating at least three to four feet off the ground, has a misty ghost-like quality about it as it looms over the ceremony. Who could this mysterious figure be and why is it wearing a dark hooded robe? Perhaps it's a priest or monk, or could it be a deceased relative or someone else with a connection to the church? Without further information, we may never know. Can I go back to that? I'm afraid I'm going to mess something up. Oh, no. It is interesting. I'm glad he pointed out that it's higher off the ground, um, because that is a good point to take into effect. A black hooded figure. I can see what they mean by the hooded side of this. Um, I don't know. I mean, for that to be a monk or a priest, I couldn't tell you. I would have thought, no, well, black shadow figures is what we saw at the Basilica stuff uh, in the first in the first part of that video. Oh, no. <laughs> what an omen for your wedding day. <sighs> Who could this miss your monk without... <laughs> This image was captured in 2012 by a man named Jamie Sewell. He took the photo while attending his niece, Mia Bella's christening at St. Martin's Church in Canterbury, southeast England. The photo appears to show the ghostly head of another person just over the shoulder of the woman mm -hmm. in white. However, it wasn't until later that day when the family gathered at a local pub that they made the startling discovery whilst reviewing the photos on Facebook. Mia Bella's grandmother, Heather Sewell, initially spotted the face and was immediately shocked at how similar it looked to that of her late husband, Terry, who had taken his own life when he was just 41. I couldn't believe the likeness to my Terry and was completely amazed to see him at the christening. It knocked me back when I saw the picture. It looked so much like him, it was actually a bit upsetting to see his face. I tried to convince myself it wasn't Terry, but it's so convincing that I believe it is. 
said Grandma Sewell after viewing the photograph. Is it possible that this photo actually shows the ghost of Heather's late husband, Terry? Let us know what you think in the... Yeah. Oh, that's such a heartwarming story. Um, yeah, definitely. That last one's the Grim Reaper. I mean, I couldn't think of anything else to say about it. That is definitely the Grim Reaper. Um, oh my gosh, though, but this story, this story is so hard. Our heartwarming, emotional, and tough all at the same time. Um, you can definitely tell that's a face. Um, I see eyes, nose, mouth. Um, you can see the face shape, neck, all that. You can almost kind of see like the the like collarbones up here too. But um, oh my gosh, that's it's heartwarming in the sense like okay, grandma who lost her husband um, at such a young age to suicide is now there at uh, her her grandson's. I'm assuming I don't I can't remember if it's that either. Her grandson's Chris, uh, christening. Um, to join them and over her shoulder. It would be different to me if it was somewhere else, but over her shoulder specifically. Um, and to paint such a likeness up, but that is so cool to have the grand, the granddads there in spirit. And then it goes back to what I was saying earlier that not all ghosts are demons. Not all paranormal experiences are demonic. There is wholesome stuff happening. A lot of these ghosts are a lot of like her just like us most times, very confused, scared, and just not knowing what's going on. Um, but man, that it warms my heart, breaks my heart. I don't know how to respond, and I feel like if I talk about it anymore, I might start crying. And Man, that's cool, though. That's a cool thing. Don't share it. Don't take this image and be like, ah, ghost. This is a fam. This is the true definition of a family image. That's cool. This photo actually shows the ghost of Heather's late husband Terry. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. I do. I do. That's cool though. No list of creepy church ghost sightings caught on camera would be complete without. This this one is the other article, so it's a good thing. So because I didn't know this was going to cover the same the same story, so this was the other article that we didn't that we didn't the look at. Photo of the White Lady of Worstead Church. The photo was captured in 1975 by Peter Berthelot while visiting Worstead Church in Norfolk, England. The woman in the yellow dress is Peter's wife, Diane and neither of the two noticed the ghostly figure sitting behind Diane until a friend pointed it out whilst thumbing through the photos some months later. The following year, the couple returned to Worstead Church where they showed the photo to Reverend Petit, the church vicar. The Reverend immediately recognised the apparition as the White Lady. He explained to the couple that she was a kind, healing soul and that she was a resident of the church who had been seen in the area for more than 100 years. After hearing the Reverend's explanation, Diane remembered the prayer she had said during their visit one year earlier. She had been unwell and had prayed for better health. Remarkably, her ailment eased up shortly after her visit to the church. Never say. Let me get to a different... Yep. <laughs> Never say our God isn't a true God of healing. Um... I was almost, I was about ready to, to pause it at the end of the section and debunk it because to me, that just looked like, it, it, that looked way too human-like and it looked like it was just an overexposed image. Um, but that story of healing um, tells me, and the background to it too, tells me like this, the lady was an angel and sent to this person to heal them and uh, heal those who come to the to the sanctuary there so that's cool all right onto this uh creepy image there are several stories regarding the origin of this photo some claim that the ghostly figure is a monk and it was taken in the museum of the holy church in palermo italy others agree the figure is indeed a monk but don't elaborate on when or where the photo was actually taken one story claims that the photo wasn't taken in a church at all, but rather a haunted house in Somerset, England. 
The story goes that an acquaintance of the famous ghost hunter Elliot O'Donnell, Mr. A.S. Palmer, took this photo while staying in the house. He sent the image to O'Donnell along with a letter and that at around 2.45 a.m. he saw a mysterious light appear in one of the rooms. He took a photo of the light and when he had it developed, this ghostly image of a monk could clearly be seen. Intrigued, O'Donnell returned to the house with Palmer. At 2.45 a.m. both men saw a light appear on one side of the room that they were staying in. O'Donnell stood up and asked if there was a spirit present, could it give the men a sign? There was nothing but silence, and a short time later the light vanished. Unconvinced with what he had witnessed, O'Donnell returned to the house several more times. Each time he returned with new companions, and while O'Donnell himself never saw anything out of the ordinary, many of the other men did. They claimed to have seen mysterious lights, and one even said that he saw a dreadful figure appear in another room. While the origins of the photo were cloudy, every version of the story seems to agree on one thing. The ghostly figure is indeed a monk. Many believe that the image is undeniable proof of the existence of ghosts. However, others are more sceptical, claiming that the photo could have easily been hoaxed using double exposure. Until more information surfaces, it's up to the viewer to decide if this photo is in fact real or fake. I'm going to leave this one up to you guys, because um, I don't know if th this was what, what did they say, like early 1900s, like 1910, 1918, 1928, somewhere in there. Um, I don't think at that time that it could be recreated that way, or be created this good to be a hoax. Um double exposure I could get behind um, that kind of does make sense to me the thing that's kind of pulling me back from believing this is the fact of the black hood here on the person's face which that is very clear as day I mean I cannot argue with that the black hood to the white dress that's the part that's throwing me off because you can see like, they're clutching something. You can see, to me, there's hands here. Um, maybe this isn't... I mean, and maybe this is something else completely. But it does look staged. But at the same time, I, I don't have... I don't personally have enough to debunk it. This photo was taken in 2007 in a church in the village of Penal in Gwynedd, Wales. It was captured by a woman from the UK named Stella, who, while it's not stated in the picture's description, presumably took a photo of her son. At first, it seems as though she hasn't captured anything unusual, until you zoom in on the right side of the altar. There, in front of the pews, is what many believe to be the ghost of a priest. The robed apparition appears to have its hands clasped in prayer, and while it's clearly visible, it has a hazy, almost mist-like quality. What do you think? Could the mysterious figure actually be the ghost of a former parish priest? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. This picture to me is like way too fuzzy. I can see what they're going for and I'm, I was trying to see if there's anything like mirrored on that side. I would like to know if there's this railing here too. Um, if it's covered, you can see it's standing in front, but the weirdest thing about this, and this is creepy, this is almost nightmare fuel, is you can see the black eyes and nose, but then the mouth, that is the creepiest smile I have ever seen. That is just not okay. Like, not okay at all. It's, I don't know. That's weird, though. What do you think? Could the mysterious figure actually be the ghost of a former parish priest? Let us know what you think. Could be. That could be. The, but that image is too fuzzy to, to be this definite. captured by Reverend K.F. Lord in 1963 is perhaps the most well-known example of... That's a plague doctor. Fight me in the comments to tell me otherwise, but that's a plague doctor. ...of a ghost caught on film in a church. It was taken Caught on in film? North Yorkshire, England, and appears to show an ominous nine-foot-tall hooded spectre standing to one side of the altar. 
Over the years, many people have Dying by car. Figure. A popular theory suggests that it could be the ghost of a 16th century monk who was wearing a white shroud to cover some sort of disfigurement, possibly caused by leprosy. Several photographic experts have studied the photo, concluding that the figure is not a result of double exposure. The way the figure's black cloak drapes perfectly yeah. over the altar's stairs also lends weight to the authenticity of the image. Yeah. The reverend always maintained that he never saw anything out of the ordinary when he took the photo, only noticing the ghostly spectre after the film was developed. Face. Well, we How's it melted? Take a look at a mysterious photo taken at a priest's funeral. Remember to hit that subscribe button and turn on channel notifications. That way you won't miss out on any the scariest videos. part of the whole video. But go check out this guy. I, re I really like this guy. This image was posted online by a man named Joel. He claimed that the photo was taken by a friend of his while attending the funeral of Father William Goulas of the St. Stanislaus Church in Cleveland, Ohio. Father Goulas was said to have been murdered in his office, after which the murderer set fire to the building. The casket of the priest is under a misty haze as it's being led towards the altar. There are long trails of light streaming off the casket, and there also appears to be a dark shadow trailing behind the lighter mist. This bizarre sight was only apparently captured in this photo and not seen at the funeral as there would have been more accounts of the incident documented online. Once again, the camera has captured something that the human eye simply can't see. But is the strange light really the ghost of Father Goulas? We'll let you decide. I have never seen anything like this. That's creepy. I have no idea. The the light trails. That's what's confusing me. The only thing I could have that maybe debunks it, maybe, is if it's a reflection off the casket and um, the camera is like a stop motion camera that's taking it. Because this was 50s. So I think stuff like that existed at the time. And I think if it pulls like that, it will create that light trail. I don't know. That is a biggest stretch among stretches. Ah. So how we doing? <laughs> How's everybody doing? Um, let's see. It's 9.26. We have time for another video. Um... Scariest things ever seen at church in churches. How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slut Ham. Today we're looking at the scariest things ever seen inside of churches. So hit that subscribe button and get ready for more creepy content. Okay, I'm not kidding. And it could have been the cushion settling in, but I felt like something prick my ear. I have this cold, I mean, I cold, it's cold outside, but I have this cold chill around me now. I don't like it. <laughs> Y'all see anything behind me, you let me know, please and thank you. Um, that could have been the, the, because I took this off. Um, I had it offsetting my ear so I can hear me. Um, let's move on. <laughs> so just like this this scary video was uploaded to residents 2001's YouTube channel in March 2015 captured at the Lincoln Cathedral in Lincoln England the footage has piqued the interest of several paranormal enthusiasts the clip starts as the camera holder is filming the cathedral at night time when something suddenly grabs their attention at first, it seems to be nothing unusual, possibly just part of the wall or some sort of object protruding from the other side. However, as the camera holder approaches, you can see that the shape actually resembles a face. They get closer and no. closer, and the face begins to slowly pull back behind the wall. I'm good. I'm good. The camera holder makes a quick dash in an effort to catch another glimpse. 
However, when they turn the corner, the mysterious Gosh, face has completely vanished. Dude, Shadow scared the daylight out of me. Building, but are unable to find any trace of the figure that the face belonged to. In the video's description, the uploader suggests that the figure could be a ghost, and it's certainly hard to disagree. If it was simply a masked prankster, then the camera holder surely would have seen them hiding on the other side of the wall. The cathedral, where this footage was captured, has played home to many ghost sightings over the years, and with little mm. wonder as construction of the building began way back in 1072. Even though Whoa. it was a hotbed for paranormal activity, until this footage surfaced, there was little video or photographic evidence of anything supernatural in and around the cathedral. I mean, you can see a face. Close to a thousand years, however, you can so see a face there. I see half of like a young girl's face. Nope, I'm good. This chilling footage was supposedly captured at St. Peter's Roman Catholic Church in Drawheader Island. The church houses the National Shrine to St. Oliver Plunkett, an Irish saint who, despite being totally innocent, was arrested in Dublin in December 1679. In 1681, he was found guilty of high treason for promoting the Roman Catholic faith and was condemned to death. Despite numerous pleas for mercy, King Charles II thought it was too politically dangerous to spare Plunkett at the time and therefore did nothing to stop his execution. Plunkett was hung in England on the 1st of July 1681. After his execution, his head was brought to Rome and from there to Amar, and eventually to Drawheader Island where it has resided in St Peter's Church ever since. Along with his head, the cell door from London's Newgate Prison where Plunkett spent his last days is also on display at the church. This chilling video uploaded to Vicky Bramshaw's YouTube channel in April 2010 not only shows the cell door, but is also thought to possibly show the ghost of St Oliver Plunkett himself. If you look closely at the slide opening on the door, you can see what appears to be a pale ghostly face peering out. No. Yes, and no. While some claim that the face is probably just a reflection cast by the camera holder or their companion, others believe that the camera has indeed captured the ghost of this Irish saint. Agreed. So what do you think? Does this video really show the ghost of St. Oliver Plunkett? Could it be possible that his spirit is still somehow attached to the door of the cell in which he spent his last days? Love to hear your thoughts on this one in the comment section below. I mean, that, that, that's... I, if that's a reflection of whoever's walking by there, whoever's there, you would see it in, it, consistently, but you could see it come in, come back, come in, come back, and then stop. To me, that is not something that other people are doing. That is something that is paranormal. Um, all the way up to see it. if you're look if you're looking at the last one, focus on that red circle that they um, that they showed. And let the video kind of play from there to to watch it, and then you could see the the half. It's like a half. It's almost like an hourglass shape almost, but you can see the shape of it kind of pull out and then pull back. So check that area. But yeah, I could see it. I could see something. It was harder to tell, but something came in and out of frame. Information available about this video other than it was supposedly shot at a gathering to celebrate the life of a deceased family member. While it's unclear exactly where the clip was taken, the surrounding scene in the video indicate that it very well might have been captured in a church. As the camera holds the fancy event, they focus on a table covered in brightly coloured flowers and candles. Next, they film a statue of the Virgin Mary, before focusing their attention towards a person sitting next to a hallway. Suddenly, a dark, shadowy figure zooms past the camera at great speed. Well. In fact, it's moving so fast that if you slow the footage down, all you can see is a dark blur. Several viewers have suggested that it could be a shadow person, a dark, shadowy figure that is thought by many to lurk at the edge of our peripheral vision. Some also say that the only way to actually see a shadow person is to capture them on camera, 
as the human eye is not fast enough to see them. However, as they're often thought to move at great speed, they can be very difficult to identify. Sadly, that, coupled with the lack of information available on this video, means that whatever this dark shadowy figure really is, will have to remain a mystery for the time being. So that, to me, though... Where it is kind of random... That, to me, kind of looks like... Um, Somebody just kind of bolting by. Um, obviously. But it looks like a human bolting by. Um, it's... You can see him kind of start and stop. And the stop, you can kind of see... Like, actual figure. Now, again... I could be wrong. But... I mean... Because you can tell he's inside the building because the the shadow... I'm pointing to the screen like you can see it. Because you can see the shadow cover the doorway here. And you can see it cover this. I mean, two bright areas that it, that it covers up. But... I don't know. That seemed real to me. Like a real person. Interesting. This brief clip was uploaded to Past's YouTube channel in October 2011. Several members of a paranormal investigation team were exploring the ruins of St Mary's Church near the village of Colston Bassett in England when they captured this eerie footage of what appears to be a ghostly figure as it passes by one of the windows. If you slow the footage down, you can see that the figure looks as though it could be a set up a jump scare or even a robe of some sort. While it's possible that the figure could simply be the reflection of one of the investigators, the strange way in which it appears to be dressed tends to indicate otherwise. In the video's description, the uploader also claims that all members of the team were accounted for at the time the ghostly figure was caught on camera. The ruins in which the footage was captured have a long history dating as far back as 1135. The church has been renovated several times, with much of its current facade dating back to the 14th and 15th centuries. By the mid-18th century, however, much of the local population had left the area and the church fell into disrepair. As it stands now, the building and its grounds certainly do look like a stereotypical haunted church. But is it really home to the supernatural? This footage might prove that there is indeed a resident ghost wandering the grounds. That did look like, um, that did look like, uh, reflection. The way the, it, it, I think it focused too much on the movement, but if you look at the light placement and how it kind of panned at the same time, I would say that the light kind of shifted with it so I could see why it disappeared that quick. Other did. It did look like it, it shot out in a different way, but I don't, I'm bad with light and how all that works. I don't know. That looked fake, or that didn't look like anything to me. This frightening photo was uploaded in a video to YouTube by Piotr Kowalewski in May 2015. The description says that it was taken in a Catholic church somewhere in Poland by the uploader's mother. The gatherers seen in the photo were supposedly celebrating a First Communion. However, there's one figure walking between the aisles that looks eerily out of place. The figure is dark and shadowy and you can see right through its head and legs. While it's possible that the figure is simply the result of a camera malfunction, it certainly does resemble a ghostly entity. Some have even suggested that it could be a shadow person similar to the one seen earlier in this video. Similar to the one to tea. Some of the... Okay, I didn't believe camera misfunction to start with. 
hear the shoes. I don't know enough about ghosts, but that looks too much of a real manifestation. Does that make sense? The one where the figure is walking. Shadow. Is that the last one we looked at, Morgan? The one in the cathedral on the window reflection? Oh, you're talking about the one at the funeral. The, the two before the current one. Oh, this one? Oh, I see what you're saying. The shadow is like behind it up here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm with you here. Yeah, you can kind of see see the faintness of the shadow in both directions, which would make sense with, like, camera flashes. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it, it does look like it's... It's like that old, like, uh, that trend on YouTube where it was, like, using the new panoramic feature for your iPhone and you, like, take a picture... Or take a moving picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one. Um... Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, and it looks like just like that movement it would distort an image like this. The blur looks like maybe it was a girl that was that's like running across. It is interesting that it is all black. Um, but that could have been all black considering everybody else's. Oops, sorry, <laughs> all black considering everybody else's in white. But yeah, I'm with you. I. This doesn't, yeah, this doesn't seem like it's a paranormal thing to me. suggested that it could be a shadow person, similar to the one seen earlier in this video. What do you think? Does this photo prove the existence of shadow people? Or could there be another explanation behind this mysterious figure? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Before we get to that number one spot and take a look at some eerie footage taken inside a church in Poland, remember to hit that subscribe button and tickle the bell icon. That way you'll be in the loop about all our latest content. Make sure you tickle the bell icon, guys. I mean, come on. This is 2020. You need to tickle bell icons. Like mine on this YouTube. Serious footage Core Youth Group. captured by a man who was documenting the architecture of a church in Poland. Church windows. Okay. In the beginning of the video, the man makes his way towards an empty confessional booth and films the interior. He then continues towards the second booth. As he passes this one, however, you can see a sinister looking reflection in the glass. The figure appears pale and hazy and has dark sunken eyes. Oh, okay. At this point in the video, it's reasonable to assume that it might simply be the reflection of the camera holder or someone standing near him that's become warm no. and distorted in the glass of the confessional booth. However, it's what he captures next that will truly send chills down your spine. The camera holder makes his way to a yet another confessional booth and, as he did with the previous two, begins filming the interior. As he passes, he catches yet another glimpse of an unsettling figure. There in the bottom corner of the window is a ghastly ghost-like face staring nope. back at him. Nope, 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 could it be possible that this man has inadvertently captured the spirits of past visitors to the church? Perhaps yep. patrons once looking for forgiveness for wicked deeds they had committed, only to be trapped in the afterlife inside the very same confessional booths, forced to spend eternity thinking upon their sins. If you want to see more scary videos just like this... You know what? <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> that last one was a little...
Um, oh, that was that last one was creepy. That was probably the most real like imagery that makes sense to me. Um, the the that first image where they're where it's the full body in there. I think light distortion could have done that because that looked like the one dude from uh, that first in the first confessional that looked like the one dude from the nightmare before Christmas, the ghost guy. How, what is it? Who is it? Um, if I put ghost guy in ghost, oops, ghost guy. Um, what did I say? Nightmare before Christmas. Nightmare before Christmas. No, not Jack Skellington. Oh, I know who I'm thinking of. Sack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it looked a lot like this. I mean, that's the type, that's the first thing that at least came into my mind. But that second one, though, that second image with the child's, it looked like a child's face in the bottom corner. That looked real to me. That looked... 100% real to me. I mean, that looked like it just a face. I agree with what um, the ham the ham channel said that I don't think that could have been re. Uh, I I don't think that could have been anybody. I don't think that could have been redone in a specific way. I don't think I don't think that that's like something else in a, in its entirety. Um, that was creepy though. But um, we have 15 minutes. I shouldn't have clapped. My ears are ringing. Um, we have about 15 minutes left in the stream. Um, I do have some announcements I want to cover at the end of this. Um, so, but I do have one more ghost story to tell. And this one was, um, depending on how you view ghosts, I think might might be up to you. Um, it was hard for me to kind of explain this, but... Um, years ago and I'm talking like 2012 um when I was in the youth group at Mount Morris um we had just got done with a um carnival over the summer and the two leaders that we had were just bickering back and forth and it was a it was a failed attempt and all that and I was upset because of how much work we did and how bad it turned out and I I, I stormed off and was sitting in our sanctuary, and this is where this is actually where I think um, sitting in the sanctuary by myself to kind of collect myself and to kind of be alone with God um, kind of came from. Um, they were bickering back and forth, and I'm not one that likes to be in a room where people are fighting. It just I I, I soak in too much of the vibe of other people that having that experience was like I, I need to move, I need to get out of here. So I did, and I went to our sanctuary, and it was sitting there, and I didn't feel myself calming down. I felt myself getting angrier, and um, thankfully, um, I was I maybe had sat in there for like 15, 20 minutes, and thankfully a friend of mine who was in our youth um, came and found me in she was very much into the paranormal and believed all that too so it was good and she very much left me with the idea that there was this black spirit like hovering around me and it kind of like came out of me so something like dark was residing within me somehow that caused this like intense anger and this intense frustration that um the way she had phrased it was if i had if i was stuck in that same way too my heart i i could have went into a heart attack um because my heart was beating so hard um i want to say like my heart rate was like like 150 160 which it has only ever gotten that angry twice that i'm aware of um so, but the idea that that darker imagery and that darker entity entity was had kind of took a hold of me and was working within me was um, that was scary to me. 
Um, and after that, we truly believe that that church is haunted. And to have our Mount Morris first be haunted would make sense because that church is like 250 years old by now, I think. I think it was like 1790, 1770, somewhere in there that... Uh, the church was built um and i remember one night we set up a camera down a hall down the hallway in the basement behind the kitchen so to paint the picture um the back door is like the main entry door so you go uh go up the stairs to the main hallway straight as the choir loft right as the basement left is the education wing um go right down if you head down to the bottom of the stairs straight down is the kitchen to the left, you'll head down kind of like the supply slash youth hallway. And we set up a camera down there because we had had some other experiences before where stuff like that happened. And we could see different, like, uh, lighting fixtures. Didn't hear any kind of audio stuff, but we had experiences like that down there. And there was, there was a lot of different times where the emotional energy of that church was um, manifesting. Um, again, this was so long ago. The, the, main, the main one I told was the main one I remember. Um, but yeah, that church is haunted, haunted with a capital H at night. Um, <laughs> um, but there you go. So that kind of will wrap it. I'm going to turn lights on. So everybody beware. Me too, me included. I had to turn that one because it's no light. It's like not near me. Um, but that's it. So thank you everybody for joining me for this, uh, second installment of the Spooktober stream. Um, just some couple quick announcements that I wanted to get into before we end today's stream. Um, and let me pull up Facebook too, because that's where a lot of them will come from. Um, as I mentioned, about halfway through the stream, I want to say, or um, about start of the way, we are going to do a uh, we are going to do the Five Nights at Freddy's stream, Morgan. Um, we're going to do that Halloween night. Oh gosh, that really scared me. Um, we're going to do that Halloween night, uh, from eight to midnight. So we're going to go the entire stream. Um, and we're going to go the entire rest of the night. We're going to play five nights at Freddy's. Um, I think that'd be a cool way to end the night. Um, so we're going to do FNAFs one through four at least. We might do sister location too. I don't know yet. Um, but FNAFs one through four is going to be my goal. Um, So stay tuned for that. That'll be, again, Saturday the 31st at 9. Or at 8. Like I said, we'll go 8 to midnight. Um, oh, excuse me. Let's sit down for two hours. Um, so stay tuned for that. Wanted to make that you guys aware of that. Next Friday, we are going to continue our Spooktober stream with um, something that's... Let me... Let me I got to look something up. So hang on. Hang on. Y'all just sit there for a minute. Spoon... Uh, Okay, so yes, uh, spooky would work in this sentence. Um, we are going to look at some spooky church parodies, um, and I and I made sure to look at um, the definition of spooky. And obviously, it's um, it was it, it, this is interesting, sinister or ghostly in a way that causes fear and unease, um, or easily frightened or nervous. Um, these are going to cause you unease. These caused me unease. Um, I did research this. Um, I will put together a full playlist through, uh, throughout this week, but, um, we're going to listen to some church parodies of popular music. Um, should I give you guys a sneak peek? Um, cause I could, and you can see how creepy this is. I don't know. I have to use the bathroom cause I've been drinking water all day. So let me use the bathroom real quick. I will be right back.
Okay. Um, sorry. So, you know what? Yeah. Because we're here, and we're going to do it, and that's all I have to say. So... So you will see the live reaction of this. Um, this is the video that sparked this idea. Um, all I can say is enjoy. If you hear meowing, my my tiny cat is in here now. So here, are you gonna react with me? Yeah. You gonna react with me? Or are you just sitting here, just gonna yell at me for attention? Okay. Here we go. This right here is the Bible slide featuring the Freedom Band. And this time we're about to get holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Everybody clap your hands. Clap, clap. Sorry, I didn't realize I didn't start this right. So we'll restart, give you the full experience. This right here is the Bible slide featuring the Freedom Band. And this time we're about to get holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Everybody clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. All right, we're about to have some spiritual milk. To the left. Take a step of faith. Pray once this time. On the devil, let's stomp. On temptation, let's stomp. Bible slide, real smooth. Now, please, shout. this now like twice <laughs> um and i and i made sure to kind of spread it apart because i wanted to make sure i don't just you know inherently remember it um spiritual milk is the weirdest se yes spiritual milk is the weirdest sentence ever but it's actually scripture it took me a, a, a long while a to stop laughing about it but b to actually look it up and it is like i said it is actually scripture um spiritual milk verse it is like i said it is true scripture first peter 2 2 like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. It is true scripture. It's, it, um, if I remember correctly, and I don't have my, I don't have my study Bible nearby, otherwise I could get into detail about it. Um, yeah. Um, if I understood it right, it, you know, babies need milk to grow and for sustenance and all that it's calling us like as new child children of god we crave the the nourishment that the bible teaches us and that jesus gives us um so like i said it took me a minute i had to recollect myself because i have never heard the term spiritual milk before and i don't know if i want to again so there's your Bible lesson for today, everybody. Let's continue. <laughs> to the right. Take a step of faith. Jump out the boat. Right foot, let's go. Left foot, let's go. Bible slide now, y'all. Now it's time to get holy. Get right now. To the left. Take it to the grave. 
and see it resurrect. Come alive this time. Right fist, two pumps. Left fist, two pumps. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Backslide. No. Backslide. No. It's just a move. Let's win the loss. Go left. Take a step back now, y'all. Two souls this time. Two souls this time. Right fist, two pumps. Left fist, two pumps. Pray on your knees. Pray on your knees. Get holy with it. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Bubble slide now. I'm going to show you guys some of the comments for this, too, because the comments were just as funny as uh, the video is. And I understand that this looks like early 2000s to me. Um, so I understand the idea of some, I have to say, youth pastor. Because if there's any um, actual adult that thought this was right... I get, again, I get it's 2000s looking, maybe like late 90s. This just isn't good. <laughs> it's not. Um, this is one of the weirdest videos I have ever watched. Um, I, I've written parodies before. I used to love writing parodies as a kid. I understand I, I understand the dynamics of a parody. I understand how they operate, how they run. I understand all that. This is not done well. And I get it. This is a youth this um, youth or young adults ministry that has just the pastor is like, hey, we need something that's culturally relevant to these guys to your generation. How about you take this very famous song that everybody likes and make it, make a Christian version of it? And this is what they did, and kudos to them, because I don't know if I could convince my youth to do it. Morgan, you might be my, uh, my backup on this, um... With the group we have now, I don't see our group committing to this unless we updated it and made it better. Um, but I don't think I could get my kids to commit to this. I don't know if I could commit to this. I could do the writing, because um, like I said, I used to love doing that, and it's, it's actually a project I've thought about getting back into. I don't know if I could commit to the possessed. <laughs> Yes, this was the creepiest part. This section right here, and this is not the end. We are not even halfway through this song. Okay, enough. I've gone on about it a lot. Uh, let's continue. Oh, Temptations, turn them down. The harvest is ready. Take them back now, y'all. Five souls this time. On principalities, let's sum. On the bondage right stomp. They're not your friends. The devil's not your friend. On the devil let's stomp. On temptation let's stomp. Behave! Everybody raise your hands. Come on, y'all! Pray it out. How low can you go? Can you go down low? Drop your knees to <laughs> So th there's two things in that just uh, 40 seconds of video that I just showed that um, raised some issues with me. Um, a, and somebody can correct me on this. When you write parodies, you have to rewrite the lines uh, syllable for syllable. Because parodies use it to, to me, and, and I have a very looser definition of parodies, um, to me parodies for music at least, you would use the same melody, but um, 
you have to keep the same, I want to say meter to it. And part of that is you, each line has to have the same number of syllables as the actual line. So um, using principalities as a word in there, principalities is five syllables. I believe how he used it is two, maybe one. You can't do that, not effectively. The other part that I have issue with is the camera work. And again, this is some underpaid staff member or some very dedicated volunteer that did it, and I'm not trying to criticize it. How low can you go? Who thought that this right here was the right frame? Who thought that in the line of how low can you go, we needed him to be like right here. It's, you just no. I mean, no part of that is wise at all. Like, none of it. Okay. That's my criti critiques for this part. Can you go down low? Drop your knees to the floor. How low can you go? He can bring it to the top. He can raise your face up. He can bring it to the top. One hop. Right foot now. Walk it out now, y'all. Bubble slide real smooth. Turn the devil down. To the right. Take his kingdom back now, y'all. Don't fall this time. Don't fall this time. Win, win. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Shake off the dust to rise. Shake off the dust to rise. Win, win. Again, I am all for parodies. And I, I, it, in the right context, this would have worked. And I think this would have been very effective. Because um, I could see this done at youth conferences or at least children's Sunday school classes everywhere. You cannot use lines that use more syllables than the actual melodic line of that song. It just does not fit. And I get, I get it. This isn't supposed to be some high stage production. I get it. Throwing the let, what is that? Let the dust arise. Shake off the dust arise. Shake off the dust arise. That's either like to the left, to the right. I get it. To the to the left. Three syllables. Shake off the dust. Uh, rise. You cannot throw six syllables into a three syllable line and make it work. It does not work that way. Okay. I'm okay. You're okay. I'm okay. We have a minute left of the song. We can get through this. Shake off the dust. To rise. Win, 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 win. He's your friend. He's coming back again. Don't be fooled now, y'all. He's coming back again. To the left. Take his kingdom back now, y'all. The loss, the loss. The cross, the cross. He's alive, let's jump. He's alive, let's jump. Right fist, let's pump. No. Who thought this was right? <laughs> Who would he... <laughs> exactly? This is the face of like, I've committed to this. <laughs> exactly. 
Oh my gosh, I can't wait to show you the comments for this because the comments are so good. And I, this guy gets memed on and it's funny, but I feel bad at the same time. This dude is like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> it was just like, oh my gosh, who? And I, I can understand if this was maybe a frame, but I believe this lasts six seconds. 343. So I think it was okay, so three seconds, I think. But still though, who thought this was good? Who thought that was the right camera movement? We still have 30 seconds left of this song. I have my headphones on backwards. His king to come, his will be done. Here's a breakdown. Here's a breakdown of what just happened and why I paused it five seconds after all this again. The John Green looking guy, which I'm thankful because I've, I was looking at this now and it was like, this guy kind of looks like me. Nobody say a word. The John Green leader. Green shirt, white collar. Perfect. His king to come. His will be done. All of a sudden... The shirt gets brighter. He has a tie, and I think a whiter collar. I that I couldn't tell. So this is that was 343 to 346. Now, at 348, we're back to the the darker green and no tie. I'm not a true storyteller. I don't know how to write. I know how to do writings. I don't know how to write a story properly. The arc of the story, though, is if this guy's coming out of God's kingdom, dressed not nice, all that, he gets a tie for two seconds. 346 to 348, as you can see, so maybe even a second. And it's gone. Why? Okay. We have less than 30 seconds. Don't slide to the left. Don't slide, and he's sliding. Can we, can we talk about that? Don't slide to the right. Don't slide he to slides the right. to the right, and then he slides to the left, after saying not to do that. This is the issue with Christianity now, is we see this, and now we're labeled as hypocrites, because we tell people not to do something, and then do it anyways. This song is very deep. Matt, Tammy, Abel, Jory, Tina, Reggie, Nicole, all you guys at Resound247.com, thank you for introducing this into my life. As I said, the funnier part of all this is the comments. This is why God doesn't talk to us anymore. And again, please take this as like, a grain of salt. This is not meant to be taken seriously. This is not meant to be taken with any kind of maliciousness towards Christianity as well. I, I thought these were super hilarious. And so that might state my level of saving. But um, yeah, the spiritual milk line. I've never in all my years of listening and dissecting Christian music heard that line being used. Um, he talks about stopping on temptation when he looks like he owns a van that says free candy. Uh, oh, this was the meme that we always, I saw a lot when I read the comments the first time through. Hey mom, can we get a cha-cha slide? But we have a cha-cha slide at home. Cha-cha slide at home. 
yeah, it, uh, this is just weird. <laughs> what kind of music do you listen to? It's complicated. If you ever catch me listening to this unironically, please stomp the devil out of me because that's the only, yeah. Takes his kingdom back, y'all. Do a smoke crusade, that's funnier. What if you wanted to? Um, yes, Hugh Jenkins, I'm with you. I said the same thing. The, the, God, no, God, no, get the arc. We're doing it again. Has to be my favorite comment that I read. And I went through a lot of these comments because there was just so much comedic gold in these. Three thirty nine. Oh, so Morgan, these are the memes from for this poor dude. When you just see the devil, <laughs> I mean, this dude gets memed on so hard, and I do feel bad for him. But the face of everybody watching this, yes. Two eleven when my. Two eleven. My mom, when I say my friend got in trouble. <laughs> what was the other one? Three sixteen. My mom went talking about this kid I hate, but my mom is friends with his mom. He's your friend. <laughs> Touche. This is why we can't have nice things. When you've only been dating for 18 years, 8 months, and 6 days, and she tries to hold your hand. Why did the guy in green look, look like if John Green was raised in a super conservative Christian household? 338, when you're all on a spiritual milk. From Jesus Christ, please try. Well, I'm Jay, you're but I know you from Texas. Oh my gosh, when you're all out of spiritual milk, am I right, guys? Ha hashtag relatable when you're all out of that spiritual milk. I just, I saw this video and I watched it. Um, and. I just I don't know I mean this people on the Jump Titanic the <laughs> I don't know man I mean this video is weird but I going down the rabbit hole of this um, of this song um, I don't know if you saw the up next. There's an Uptown Funk cover called Holy Spirit Funk. There are so many songs like this that I was like, I need to do a React compilation of these songs. Um, I'm not going to include Cha Cha or the Bible slide. We might do it at the end of next week's video too. I don't, I don't know. But there are so many of these many some of these are good i'm gonna put some good ones in too but most of these are just like oh my gosh why and i don't know and like i said this is open in 2012 okay so i don't know to me this feels like it was done long before i could be wrong um this is the only channel on the resound arts uh, this is the only video on the resound arts channel if I go to Resound Art uh, two, it, 247. Uh, let me make sure. Yeah, they don't look like they exist anymore. Um, at least the, the channel itself or the website itself doesn't. I don't know what to say. <laughs> But th this is what you can look forward to next week. 
So next Friday, a week from today, the 23rd at 8 p.m., we will be right back here doing a music reaction compilation. Um, and I'm going to say we might do that for an hour because obviously the songs are short, shorter than videos and reading articles. So we might do that and play some more Fall Guys. Um, Morgan, I did get the React Guys compilation finished today in the total of four hours it took me to do. But it is done. Um, that'll be the first Friday Fun video for November. Um, so if we play Fall Guys next week, we'll have another compilation to work with. Um, so, but that is done. That is ready. Um, so some updates, announcements. I know I've gone over the time, and um, I'll try and finish by 10:30. Um, so like I mentioned, next week's stream, talk about the Five Nights at Freddy's stuff too. Um, this Sunday, the 7th, nope, I'm sorry. Next Sunday, the 25th, is the series finale of uh, OP Adulting. And the, uh, the overall finale for Core Crew Sunday School for right now, um, I am going to wrap it up there. Um, we end on a good topic. We talk about meditation and... I'm only going to talk about the Lord's Prayer, so I thought it was it was kind of the perfect way to end it. And again, we are cutting down to three videos a week, um, just so it gives me a little extra creative energy room to uh, to add to the other videos. Um, so there you go. So uh, as of uh, first week in November, there will be no more Core Crew Sunday School. Children's Time is is rebranded. Um, it is now called Wonder With Me, um, or Wonder With Me, I should say, put the emphasis on the right syllable. Um, again, we used to celebrate Wonder Curriculum. Children's Time was last year's stuff, and it needed a new title too, so, um, we're gonna call it Wonder With Me, keep it simple. So, the new schedule will be Wonder With Me at 9 a.m. We're gonna have a, a youth Zoom call at uh, 5.30, Sunday night too. Uh, they've wanted the second one and I'm ready to bring it back, so get ready for that. Uh, Wednesdays we'll have The Word and our other core Zoom call. And then Fridays we'll have fun stuff. And um, there's a lot I have ideas for in November, so we'll kind of wait and see. As I said too, be on the lookout Wednesday. I do have a bigger announcement that I'm ready to launch. Uh, hopefully, and uh, hopefully we'll see some progress on it throughout the rest of next week. Um, don't forget to, um, let me get it up, um, Operation Christmas Child. I I'm going to keep pushing this until I'm blue in the face. You just saw a, uh, you saw, uh, I reshared the video out today, hold on. Um, but yeah. Go check this out. Um, you can pick up your shoe boxes. We're still doing our, we're still doing the shoe box packing. We're just not doing it uh, with the packing party. Uh, everything's on you guys to do it. Um, so you can come to the church and get a shoe box before or after church on Sundays, or you can come up during any time the office is open, uh, 9 a.m. to 1 a.m. Monday through Thursday. If you can't make it during that time and you want one, or if you uh, aren't comfortable coming to the church to get one please let us know and we'll make sure we get you one um everything that you need to know is in the shoe box itself you'll have your label to uh mark your age and gender and all that for it and then you have a pamphlet in there that gives you the kind of like the do's and don'ts of what to pack what not to pack um don't worry about any of the shipping costs if you want to get reimbursed for the supplies just give us a receipt we will reimburse you for it um again you don't have to worry about shipping and all that that is covered um, by us or you can do it online if you go to the website that is here in the video itself uh, I know it's a long one I, they wouldn't let me get a custom URL but if you go here you will see our shoebox page hopefully I need to actually check this out so you guys are gonna try to run something with me um, I need to see what this kind of pulls up for you guys okay this should be what it pulls up for you guys too um, you can build one online. Um, it's a cool thing that they've done this year that I'm, I was super excited about. Um, it does cost us a whole lot more. Um, 
the shipping for the shoe boxes itself is like nine bucks for a normal box, but to do it online is 25. But when you factor in the, the concepts of they have to get their supplies, they're the ones packing it, they're the ones doing the extra labor and all that makes sense. So you can just have them build shoe boxes for you and add them to your cart. You can build your own shoe boxes. Um, and again, choose your age and gender and all that. Um, and then it walks you through the steps of adding your essentials, your big wow item, uh, three small toys, and then two accessories. And then you can add your own note, you can add a picture, you can do whatever um, with it. Just keep it church appropriate, that's all I ask. Um, you are responsible to pay the 25 afterwards. Um, if you can, uh, go for it. If you can't, um, you can donate the 25 to the church, and then we will take care of it for you. The youth and I will uh, take set aside a night to uh, pack as many of the shoe boxes as we can. Um, online at least and then uh, we'll go from there so we are still hoping I am still hoping for 100 uh, we do have 50 shoe boxes ready for pickup and I did set the goal for 50 shoe boxes online um, I'm like I said I'm hoping we can do it if we can't we can't you know obviously this year has been way different than what we had expected and you know we do what we can but I think I I've prayed about this I've thought about this long enough I think God's gonna give us a way to do it um, however that might be. So there's that. Uh, we do have the family movie night coming up. Thank you, thank you, thank you for, for voting in the poll. Um, to Scoob uh, got the overall win. It was like five votes to one to one to one to one to one to one. Um, but Scoob is the overall winner. So if you go back to our Facebook page, um, and when I, I know Facebook is like the most outdated social media. Oh, I'm still in private. Um, I know Facebook is like the, the most outdated source of social media out there, but nah. but if you go here and uh, click on the event, um, I would like you to put on here that you are going or interested. Um, that way I can send you guys out the Zoom information properly because uh, we will be on zoom i can rent this from youtube and um that gives us the okay to do it um and i won't get in trouble so it's free you can do it from the comfort of your home uh i thought this would be kind of a nice event of fellowship and being able to just kind of gather together to do something even though we can't gather in person really um I think otherwise that's about it um like i said stay tuned for the cool news on wednesday i'm excited to launch it or i'm excited for it um i won't do a full video on it you guys will just have to see it uh kind of watch facebook for it um there is another poll available if you can if you go back to our facebook page and search through it um there's a social media usage poll um we are expanding social media platforms to newer ones and um, I'm curious what like platforms are the are the most used um, and what's like the most relevant because I am not the most relevant person. Um, so go answer that, share that out too, so that way you know more people can get their voice in on it and it'll be easier to kind of make the decision. But uh, the top two vote getters from that poll will be new social media platforms um, for it. <laughs> um so it'd be cool we do have some rebranding stuff that'll be coming out soon too that i'm excited about so yeah so that is it um like i said thank you again for joining me for this i know it was a little bit longer but i had to show you the bible slide i mean that's a video that i've sat on for so long that i had to show you guys <laughs> um yeah i i had to so get ready for more of that next Friday. Um, but overall, it's been fun. Oh, also, we are starting a Lose Coin Collection fundraiser, donating, mission project, whatever you want to call it. Um, that will be available starting Monday. Um, part of Operation Christmas Child is it's funded by our Youth Missions Program, and our Youth Missions Program 
um, is usually funded by all of our loose coin collections. Well, we haven't had a loose coin collection um, since the end of February. So we have been um, now, what, eight months, going on eight months without a collection. So our account is uh, not where it should be. Um, so I am going to set out this big water, five gallon water jug uh, that you can drop your loose coin off anytime it will be available um, during the days that I am there, during the times that I am there. Um, Monday through Thursday, nine to three typically. Um, and then on Sunday mornings as well, um, it will be available for everybody to drop off their loose coin. And then at the end, we will do a big count and uh, see how much we raise. Our goal, um, if I did my math right, our goal is like three to four hundred dollars is what we still need to hit the overarching hundred dollar goal. Um, so I am hoping that we can do that. Um, and I think with the amount of loose coin that we've had, it's doable. So um, you'll see that on Monday. I'll take a picture. Um, it'll be in the same location Monday through Wednesday, Monday through Thursday. Uh, on Sundays, it will be. Uh, in the gathering room, probably by the stand. Um, that I don't know for sure yet, but you will see, you'll obviously see it. So um, just ask you to help out financially for us too. That would be much appreciated. And then otherwise, I think that's it as far as business goes. Um, things are going better. Things are always getting better. So hopefully again, keep praying that we'll be back to some sort of normality here soon with CORE and Sunday School and Wednesday Night Live. Um, kind of coming back in some way, shape, or form. Uh, hopefully, I'm praying before the end of the year, but if not, we're going to kick 2021 off with a bang and celebrate. So, but again, that is it. Uh, check out all the videos that we've had come out. We started a new series last Wednesday, or this past Wednesday, Truth or Dare Revisited. It's a series I taught four years ago that um, still has relevancy today, and I wanted to retouch on it again. Um, again, Friday fun, and the fun stuff that we do Fridays, stay tuned. Next week we have, uh, again, the cringy church music stuff. And um, Sunday we have Wonder With Me. So as we continue our children's Sunday school class. And uh, if you have different ideas of what we could do event-wise and things-wise, Morgan, you've given me some wonderful ideas, so I give big thanks to you, big pre-shout. Um, some of that stuff I think we're going to use in November too. I don't know yet. So uh, I don't worry about November until November gets here. So, um, But that's it. And uh, we'll see you in whatever video comes next. So as always, stay blessed. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of the night. Hopefully we'll see you at church on Sunday. I may or may not be preaching a part of the service. So if that doesn't give you incentive to show up or at least tune in, Sundays 10:30 facebook.com slash Bethany Church or facebook.com slash Clio Bethany. I know our Facebook account for the church. So, but as always, though, thank you. Stay tuned for whatever comes next. As always, stay blessed. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.